family, family. Yeah, it's beautiful because it's like, you know, as we were saying, these relationships given over to the Holy Spirit are about clearing away um, as much unconscious uh, darkness that, that is possible in a short period of time. So that's the accelerated aspect of it. And um, basically with with parent-child relationships, you know, it's like the, the core problem uh, the, that's underneath this whole universe, this whole cosmos, is what we've called the authority problem. And it's a, it's a question of authorship. So, so when you have a, a relationship that seems to be like a mother-daughter relationship, it's going to flush up a lot of stuff really quick because it seems in this world like like the mother comes before the daughter in the sense that in time uh, the mother, that, that role, that concept was there and then the daughter role comes along and so there's an enormous control uh, issues that come up in parent-child relationships. Um, and um, nowadays, you know, you, you have children seemingly being born that are reflecting this uh, this sense of, of di divine equality or this sense of, no, I, we're not, I'm not going to put up with that this time around. Uh, you know, I've done this before and you played the controller and I was the controlly, and it just ain't going to happen uh, this time. I'm going to make sure <laughs> that, that it doesn't happen. And it seems to involve a lot of conflict when there's a clinging and holding on to those, those roles. Uh, I've shared many times, like when I first went to South America and I was going off into the rural areas of Argentina and I would sometimes meet with course groups and typically there would be maybe four or five, six mothers in the course group in rural Argentina. And oftentimes they were, they were glowing and they were so happy and they were saying, oh, the course and my, my, my children uh, are showing me so much. It's so fast. I feel like they were like a rapid acceleration. And so it was all Spanish, you know, but I would, I would have a translator and I would say, can you, can you tell me what the main lesson you're learning from your children, in most cases young children? And the women all just agreed right away. They gave me a quick answer. And the answer was, translated to English, was, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what the young children were teaching. You're done. And when we went into it and explored it a little more, it was like this hierarchy of of someone in control and someone being controlled, this game of uh, superior, inferior, it is over. Yeah. And I'm here to show you that it's over beyond a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. And it was so great that these mothers were really aware of of that. They were like happy. They were doing their course lessons going, I'm getting it. It's over. <laughs> and, and that takes a lot of loosening and surrender from the concept. But with the context of the course, you know, they had a perfect context to, to get it, to really get the lesson. So that's one aspect of it. The other thing is um, that, that if this is a whole cosmos built on private thoughts, private minds and private thoughts, what better way to experientially get that in your face so you can let it go than to have the teenager act out the, the value of privacy? You know, oh, mom, you're embarrassing me. Oh, <laughs> why do you do that? I can't stand to be around you. If you're going to do that, I don't even want to be near you. You know, all those kind of things involving privacy are you might say just an acting out, so it's bringing it more to the surface of consciousness so you can just see it for what it is and let it go. And then as you do let it go more and more, you have less and less investment in the mother role, then you're more able to see everything as the Holy Spirit sees it, as either love or a call for love. So instead of taking it as a personal attack when you're told, get out of my face, I don't want to... You know, don't stand near me when I'm going on the bus. You know, why did you wear that? <laughs> I'm not going, get out of my face. I am not going to be seen near you with that outfit. Like, <laughs> my God. All of that is just coming in as, 
as calls for love, you know, where you can just love unconditionally and saying, yes, yes, okay, you like the hat, and, you know, you can make a few jokes in there and be light about it uh, without taking it as like an insult, without interpreting it as, oh, my baby doesn't want to be near me anymore, or our relationship is changing, you know, we aren't as close, you know, yeah, you're still close, it's just that these kind of unconscious thoughts that have been blocking the way of, of that sustained closeness, that connection, are being brought up to awareness so that you can, can let them go. So in that sense it's a blessing. But it takes that higher perspective to really see the blessing. You know, from the ego sense it seems, it seems sad. It can seem like, like the relationship that we had, like when you were six, we were so close, it was adorable. You were more like a puppy dog or a kitty cat. Now it's like, I don't know what this thing is, 13? <laughs> you know, it's like, goth, ah! <laughs> it's like, uh, what has happened, you know? But it's all just bringing the, the private thoughts, the belief in private thoughts and private minds to awareness. <laughs>